Hello, Phil. How are you? Uh, good, yeah. A little bit bored these days, but yeah, pretty good. Well, you won't be bored for the next hour, hopefully. <laughs> first, first things first. Can I call you Jags? What What do I call you? Because yeah. Phil Bentley mentioned you earlier. Went, yeah, Jags, and I was like. Oh, I don't know him as Jags. What do I do? Yeah, I think Jags is better. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Phil feels like I've either done something wrong or... Or we're at school, right? Yeah, exactly. Philip! Yeah. Does anyone call you Philip? Uh, well, Warnock did when I was in trouble. Right. Jags when I did well. Philip when I, I did not go too well. <laughs> if there was so. a meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Who's look. he calling in? Um... Who say again? If there's a meet, if like what's oh, for a meeting, depends. Depends if we've conceded three at the weekend right. or whether I've got the winner. Yeah, exactly. Get yeah, in here now. Lads, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for coming. in. A real pleasure. I always get excited when we get you know proper players that have played at the high, the very highest level. Play for England, captain England, play for Everton. You know, so thank you so much for coming. in. A real pleasure. We've got lots to talk to you about. A bit later on, we have to. I'm looking at a list of players you've played with: Steve Gerrard, Frank Lampard, Sammy Leto, David Beckham, Wayne Rooney, Harry, Harry Kane. The list goes on. Darren Bent as well. Yeah, the list, <laughs> there the list goes on and on. So, I mean, you've had some unbelievable nights uh, on a football pitch. So we'll talk about that a bit later on. But um, I suppose that the best place and the only place we can start is with your beloved Everton and with what's going on at the moment. Um, what what do you make of, of the fact that Everton have had these points taken off them? They're now fighting for their lives. They're in the bottom three. What, what do you make of the current situation at Goodison? Well, I knew it, it wasn't a great situation before the points. Obviously, there's been a sort of a financial, you know, strain on the club for a little while now. Selling the best players, selling the young lads, you know, to to try and make the FFP. And then when I heard there was going to be ten points, which was you know a significant amount of points when you talk about the Premier League, it's not a, um, a, a sort of forty six game season. Ten points is a lot, and especially considering Everton have only survived literally last game of the season one year, and then I think it was two before before that. But you know, they got galvanised and, you know, the team did well, got themselves out of it. But then, you know, you open the, the newspaper, listen to the radio, whatever, and you realise that there's potentially more points on the horizon. Um, I don't know what's going on. I don't know how and who comes up with the ideas of how many points and how quickly this has been done. You know, there's been plenty of other teams that have supposedly bent the rules slightly or more than slightly, shall we say, over the course <laughs> of the years. But that that's never been, you know, sorted or figured out. And then all of a sudden... You know, Everton have been given 10 points. Even Forest, Forest have been in the Premier League no time at all. And all of a sudden, they're on the radar as well. So, something's not right. I, I presume some rules must have been broken for, obviously, Everton to accept it. But, um, it's, it's you know, it's tough times. Has it surprised you, sorry, Andy, about what's happening to that football club? Because surely when you were there, it was stable. Uh, top half finishes comfortably. Um, and the last couple of seasons, they seem to have lost their way and now put the 10 points aside you spoke about it there the surviving last day of last season almost fighting relegation are you almost in shock as to what's going on at Everton? Massively but part of it was happening towards my sort of my last year or two and I think it's you've got to understand what your club is and what your club you know gives to the league and what, where you should be and I think you know Chelsea came in you know the owners came into Chelsea you know what 10-15 years ago and what's similar with, with Man City again and and they were able to flex their muscle and, and literally go and buy a team that was going to challenge for the top of the division. Mm. When Everton's money came around, there was already five or six teams that were plenty good enough to win the Premier League. When Chelsea and Arsenal, uh, Chelsea and Man City did it, it was probably one or two. Liverpool weren't the Liverpool that we're looking at now. Mm. You know, it was Man U, Arsenal, or whatever. Do you know? And they just spent the money in the wrong places. You know, they, they tried to to buy people without probably doing the the homework. When I was at Everton. I think, you know, I think they called David Moyes dithering Dave, and I think that's what the reason he, he was so dithering is because he cared so much about the squad, and we didn't have much money. It was all about making sure we not only got a player that was going to perform on the pitch, but the right characters in the dressing room as well. You, you know, you played in the same area as me, Benny. Like that made your team. You know, yeah. you had individuals that would win you games, but their core squad and the, and, the, and the core team would obviously make sure your season was was a, a successful one and I think it just drifted, drifted, drifted and before you know it um, we're sacking managers there's managers left, right and centre we're, we're releasing players we're, we're selling people we don't want to sell and that's purely down to a, to a mismanagement of the money uh, When we talk about Everton when I come off air or sometimes when I'm on air I see texts and tweets come in and I look on social media the majority of Everton fans claim there is a personal vendetta against that club do you see it as that? I can see why they think that way. I just said before, there's, I, I can't believe that there's only one club that's ever made bad decisions since the Premier League. Yeah, exactly. And there's only one team that's been deduct, deducted points. 
I don't know the ins and outs. I don't know exactly what's going on, if the rules have changed and yeah. blah, blah, blah. But if other clubs have got away with it, you can't say it's still pending. You can't say we've been pending these investigations for 25 years. Who's going to care what's gone on? You can relegate... Do you know, like, it's got to be done within a within a time frame. And it seems like, for whatever reason, someone's mm. decided that, you know, this was going to happen very sharpish. Every time I had one case against them, mm-hmm. Man City have got over 100 pending... Do you feel as though the bigger clubs, no disrespect to Everton, but the uh, the bigger clubs in the Premier League will get treated differently? Well, it, it seems like they are, but we don't know enough information where maybe 95 of Man City's counts were done before they changed the rules. You know, because it's because they don't give us enough information. They're not really letting us know mm. what's going on. All we're left to do is speculate like I say, Everton are gonna feel Evertonians are gonna feel victimised, as will Forest fans. If Forest get deducted and no one else do, and they end up going down, or someone else does, because it's not happened. You know, I was at Derby. You know, Ben, you played that, and stuff was done wrong, and it was points after points after points after points. In the end, the the football league made sure Derby got relegated, and whether they meant to or didn't mean to, you can't deduct close to twenty odd points. Do you know, like, and expect a team to survive, and say you can't play. Your, you can't pay your players any more than X amount, and that X amount isn't enough to to probably field the League Two or you know top conference team. You know you're basically saying in a roundabout way, you've done wrong. Now you're going to pay the price, which is automatically going to be relegation. And it seems something quite similar when you when you look what's going on at Everton. When you look at the manager they've got in charge in Sean Dyche, when you look at him, he's a fighter. He's certainly someone who's not going to quit. Do you think they've got the right man in charge then for this scenario that looks like it's about to happen? Um, when Sean Dice got the job, I was quite comfortable and happy because he's comfortable in his own in his own skin, in his own environment. He's got a backroom staff that he's been with for a while. Whether he's the person that Evertonians want wanted or want in charge in five, six, ten years' time, and hopefully get them back to winning silverware, it's irrelevant. The situation they're in now is pretty dire. You know, for me, perfect Sean Dice. He, He's conducting himself fantastic. He's got a group of men that are going out there wearing the shirt, doing it proud. And will it be enough? I hope so. You know, all Evertonians hope so. But it's going to be really, really tough. When I was growing up, and this is oh, ben, 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 to say it's like the fifties. It wasn't the fifties. It was a little bit like that. In, in the eighties, as a kid, Everton were as big as you can get. It was Everton and Liverpool. Okay, Everton were winning league titles. They were winning Europe. They were winning FA Cups. And, and now they're as far away from that Everton as they have been since I can remember. Where, why is it that Everton are in the, the state they are at the moment? Can you can you go back in time and put your finger on a defining moment as to why maybe other clubs started producing the goods on the field and off the field financially as well, but bringing in better players, winning more league titles? And for Everton, it didn't quite work, and they're in the place they are now. I think it's just decision making. I think when I joined Everton, the difference between Everton and Liverpool wasn't that drastic. And I think, you know, I got told, you know, you go to derbies and fans would sit alongside each other and it's like a friendly atmosphere. It's not that way like, even close anymore. You know, Liverpool have, have managed to invest their money and they've, they've obviously extended the stadium. The playing squad speaks for itself. I think Everton, it comes to, it comes to like a, in the crossroads where they just didn't progress forward. We were getting, you know, we were getting to semi finals. You know, finals of FA Cups, a bit further in European competitions. And then, as I said before, as soon as we got money, it I won't use the word panic, but it just seemed to be a case. We bought, we must have bought five players in the same position and they were all for £20 million plus. And I'm looking at the team thinking, OK, I wonder, you know, some come from a different place, you'd not see much. Have you thinking, I wonder how he's going to fit in. No, no, he's OK, you'll take the set piece, he'll do this. And before you know it, it was just a mishmash of team. Then you change manager... Now a manager wants to play with wingers, but we've sold all the wingers a month ago. So what, you have to go and buy some more wingers? Now we've got 25 international players that are trying to play for 11 positions. When I was at Everton, David Moyes probably had 15, 16 hardcore first-team players with four or five younger lads that would make up the squad. Bear in mind, it's a little bit older, where there wasn't as many subs, blah, blah, blah. And it worked, but I think they just got lost with the, the expected that because they'd spent money on players that, did well potentially in another system or for another manager. And we weren't buying bad players, just not ones that were suited to the style of play or where I imagine they thought Everton were going to go. Obviously, we've been chasing a new stadium, which 
Thankfully, I went to go and look at it, which is going to be amazing. Okay. Hopefully, you the Premier League that. one, yeah. Tell us about that in but a second. So, so the plans are going in the right direction. It just seems to be so mismanaged. And like I say, my, my last season, I think there must have been seven different managers, players in one squad. Wow. And it takes... It's a lot. You, yeah. you, you're ranging from you know, Roberto to Ronald Koeman to Sam Allardyce. Unzi had it for a little bit. Then we had Silva. Do you know, like you're not talking about everyone with the same philosophy. You're talking polar opposites. Yeah. So how on earth are you supposed to do that? And I think that's where the wage bill and maybe the caps on where they've gone has struggled because obviously there was money to buy people because the owner was wealthy or is wealthy. But that's not the way mm -hmm. it works. The rules are the rules of who you get in with the money. Talk Sport Drive, super opinionated sporting debate, Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.